Now, while the England flag is being flown from pub windows, car roofs, even in Downing Street these days, because of the World Cup, another lesser-known flag has this week been spotted in the heart of Whitehall. On Monday, a brand-new flag for Sussex was flown by Eric Pickles in his department's office block. Yeah, I didn't notice it either. Anyway, it's a celebration of Sussex Day, and it turns out lots of counties are fluttering flags of their own, as Adam has been finding out. Every county has its own character, but when it comes to choosing a county flag, there seem to be some common themes. First, put something local on it. Obviously, Nottinghamshire nodded towards their most famous local outlaw when they first adopted theirs in 2011. Number two, there's always immense local pride. Just listen to the good folk of Worcestershire as the three pairs graced a flagpole for the first time. I think it's rather smart, actually. Represents the county. Three pairs for the county, and yeah, I like it. It's good. I can see it right down from the high street coming up. Yeah, yeah, very impressed. Yeah. And third, they're usually chosen through some kind of competition. For example, how on earth would the people of Northamptonshire choose between these four beauties? But as they found in Derbyshire a few years ago, you can't please all the people all the time. Well, out of the three, it was um, my least favourite, but not to worry. <laughs> Although it goes to show that across our green and pleasant land, county pride is flourishing, not flagging. So what he tells him. Joining us now in the studio, uh, Graeme Bartram. He is uh, the Flag Institute's chief vexillologist. That's an expert in flags, in case you didn't know and you do now. In our brand studio is Peter White, a Sussex town crier who celebrated Sussex Day. And in case you didn't know, I'm sure you all did, it was on Monday. Let me come to you first, Peter White. How did you celebrate Sussex Day? Well, with the raising of the flag, and in fact we raised it, to, I, ra I helped raise it two days running, because my own town, Seaford, always does it on the Sunday nearest to Sussex Day, and then I go and help Crobra, who haven't got a town crier, raise it on the actual day itself. Uh, and they have a, usually have a fate as well. So, but other than raising the flag, what else did you do? Uh, well, there is a charter. Um, sometimes people read the Sussex Charter. I'm not quite sure where that came from, but there is a Sussex Charter which can be read. And sometimes um, the, the person reading it uh, decides to customise it a little so that it uh, applies to the town in which it's being read, as well as the, uh, the wonderful counties of uh, East and West Sussex. I mean, it doesn't sound like a lot of laughs. Did you have not have a party as well? Uh, the people of Crowborough certainly had a party and the, the people of Seaford always celebrate with a cup of tea from the lifeguards. <laughs> Quite right, too. Always good to support the lifeguards. Uh, what do you make of the Sussex flag? Do you like it? I am a traditionalist and I still prefer the, the old red and gold martlets, but that, that's just me. Oh. Uh, the, the new Sussex flag, it's, it's got its fans, it's also got its detractors. Um, people aren't quite sure where it came from. I know it's now been approved by the Flag Bureau. And, and those people who are a little worried about Europe also point out that it's blue and gold, like the European flag. But I dare say that uh, when the, the town council in Seaford finds the money to buy uh, the new one, they will probably switch to the new one. I understand that you prefer to have two flags for Sussex, an east one and a west one. I mean, you could risk setting county against county here. Well, no, they've had their own flags since the 1880s. Um, and it, when the two counties were set up separately. Okay. All right. Very interesting, a proliferation of flags. Uh, Graham Bartram, it isn't just Sussex, isn't it? A lot of English counties are now choosing their own flags. Why do you think that is? I think it's all to do with having an identity. Uh, ident local identity is becoming more and more important as a counterpoint to globalisation, I think. As, as we all become more the same, it's more important to us to be identified mm. as different. Uh, and, and to connect more with our closer roots, with our yes. local. Yeah. Has it also got anything to do with the, uh, the increasing, well, the almost entire use in Scotland now of when it's a flag of the Scottish saltire rather than the Union flag? I think they're both reflections of... They're linked, but not causally. I think they're, they're caused by the same thing, which is this desire to have a strong identity. And it's much easier to have a strong identity of something closer to you than it is to have something more amorphous and such as, say, the U Europe or, or the world. Peter, the, for a long time in, in post-war Britain, we seem to be determined to snuff out 
English county identity. Local government reforms got rid of old names and so on. Do you think that this sense of belonging to a county, of county identity, is coming back to people in England? Yeah, I think there was disillusion in the 60s and 70s when Middlesex disappeared and Surrey half disappeared and Yorkshire areas changed their name. But I think that's that's uh, there's been a swing in public mood now and people are now becoming more enthusiastic about their local area. I mean, Cornwall and Yorkshire have, have always been like that, but I think mm. other counties are catching up now. They're coming, getting a sense of their own identity. Peter, Indeed. Who, who, so not Peter Graham. Who chooses, who decides what the flag should be for each county? It, it varies. Sometimes it's the county council decide to give the flag they already had as a county council to the people as a flag. So Northumberland is like that and Hertfordshire is like that. Sometimes it's a very old historical flag. So um, the gold martlets on blue is actually the flag of Sussex from 1622. So it goes back a long way. It's got nothing to do with European colours. <laughs> um, and uh, that was chosen. So uh, similarly, I'm looking to see on the ones behind us. There's lots. Lots of them behind us. But the lion rampant is there behind yes. you. Actually, yeah. that's a dragon. That's Somerset. Oh, that's a dragon. Oh, that's that's a Somerset. Sorry, you're quite right. Uh, I'll some, just put my that's glasses quite, on. That, that's quite a new one. It's a one. dragon. <laughs> yes. Well, they've ripped it off, um, haven't they? It looks and like this. Obviously, flag. The, the, the red rose of Lancashire and the white mm. rose of Yorkshire are traditional emblems. Now, Peter's from Dorset originally, aren't you? That's, and we, I think we can show your flag, the Dorset flag. Yeah, we can get it up on the screen. There it is, the Dorset flag. What do you make of that? You like that? Um, Still a bit of pride in you there, is the heart um, beating? I think it's tremendous, this... Uh, you like this? These, this uh, assertion of regional law. I do, I do think we could undo Edward Heath's disastrous local government reorganisations of the 1970s. Done by Peter Walker? I think that's... But an important point is that that was local government organisation. The counties still existed. Middlesex still exists. Ha uh, you know, Huntingdonshire still exists. Mm. They've changed them all round, haven't they? My but relatives were born in Lancashire Rutland, and suddenly it became if, Cheshire. And it, you know, yes. I've, I've really never got over that. If you, <laughs> if you were to say that <laughs> your identity had to be based on who collects your, your litter bins, then how many people in Somerset believe, believe their identity is Bath and North East Somerset, or Bane, as it's usually yeah. called? I don't think many people would. They'd either say Bath or Somerset. We've got a flag for... I, I live in Knightsbridge. We have a flag for Knightsbridge. <laughs> What's your flag like? Uh, the, Russian Fed, the Russian Federation. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, I think uh, you've got to... Give us a ring of your bell. Well, if you're uh, absolutely happy with that and your sound engineers are... Oh. Oh, oh. oh yay! God save the Queen! For which I should have raised my hat, of course. <laughs> and you just did. <laughs> Peter, Graham, thank you very much for that. Good to talk to you.